God is good, God is faithful. God is good, God is faithful. Whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? Waiting for a couple more people to come on in here. Glad to see those who have joined. We have a minute or so to those who are coming in. Hello, Julia, welcome. Glad to have you all. Should have my other niece, because due to the pandemic, her business is closed. So look for her, who we'll know me working. Mom and dad are doing well. Just based on everything that's going on, I would say watching too much news. I spoke to him this afternoon on the way home from work. <laughs> but uh, they're doing well. Uh, trying to check in often and uh, gauge the temperature and see how we need to target prayers. Thank you. I will let them know you asked. So welcome to another Monday evening of encouragement, motivation, correction, challenge. Today is encouragement uh, as we so need it. Um, my name is Tisha Linton Rose coming to you from Surprise, Arizona. It is 6.02 p.m. here and the sun is still up, so it's a wonderful thing. Uh, soon I will make my way outside for these broadcasts because I love it outside. Uh, but for the moment, I will just stay indoors. So thank you for those of you who join each week uh, or catch the replay. I appreciate you. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity. You know, God is faithful. When he has given us an assignment, we need to walk in that. And we trust him to walk it out. Tonight, I'm coming to you with encouragement to pray believing. The title of this Periscope is, Whose Report Will You Believe? Pray Believing. That's the title. And Pretty much it stems from what has been going on the last. There she is. Hello, Brittany. Welcome to live Periscope and not the replay. We have been inundated with what is going on, um, not minimizing at all what is going on. However, everywhere you look, the media, all we hear is uh, coronavirus. Uh, COVID-19, uh, the pandemic, the pandemonium, and just all of that. And it can become overwhelming. I posted a few days on Facebook is the enemy uh, will try to use fear to take us out, to, to turn off the TV and open the word of God. And when I say the enemy will try to use fear to take us out, it's not just um, in terms of our lives. Uh, because, you know, the virus is real. You know, people have died from it. So it is real, right? It is a fact. However, as believers, um, we can stand on the word of God. I stand on the truth of God's word. By Jesus stripes, I'm healed, right? Yes, taking precautions. And even before this, I've always washed my hands with soap. I'm not a germaphobe like Harry Mandel, uh, as I've heard from someone who's worked with him. However, I am very cautious, <laughs> right? In terms of touching doorknobs, coming out the restroom, gotta have the paper towel in the hand and you know, all that. So I've been that way, you know, for some time. So, um, and in addition, the word, the word, the word, the word of God is life, is power. God watches over his word. So in terms of building up an immunity, to situations and circumstances. Yes, there will be challenges that come our way. However, between practicing good hygiene and standing on the word of God, decreeing and declaring the word of God over family members, over friends for years, you build up an immunity in terms of building up your faith. So whose report will you believe? Pray believing, that's the encouragement. You must know the enemy is already defeated. So he is seeking whomever will give him permission to operate by what we say, what we do, how we act, what we think, how we believe. Be 
assured that our fight is not against flesh and blood, even though it may be easier. Our war is in the spirit. So the war that we are waging is more challenging than the guns and the knives because it's in the spirit. So we are warring, yes, with the word of God. Yes, we have victory, but that's where we fight. That's the battlefield we fight. That's the level, the dimension from which we wage war in. So we need to be fortified. We need to be built up because the enemy can take you out with fear because he comes to paralyze us with fear and when we are fearful we will think that we're already defeated and once he gets you know fear in us and he's like oh next i can go on to the next person because you tend to give up you tend to give out and you know come with the oh i can't do this anyway it's it's hopeless you know um you know whatever is going on so whose report will you believe yes you may get a report from the doctor you have xyz abc However, the medicine, the word of God from Genesis to Revelation is our medicine. I am not saying do not take the medical test. Do not go to the doctor. Do not take your medicine. However, in conjunction, you want to take the word of God. Every time I put my medicine in my mouth, morning and evening, I come against the negative side effects, declare healing. Thank you, Lord God, for healing and wholeness. So I am taking the prescription. However, I'm walking it out by faith, knowing that God is faithful. God is able. So in this season, the encouragement to us, those of us who are believers, it's time to seek the Lord. We, some of you may be familiar with the scripture, Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, right? Well, I'm going to read a few more verses surrounding that. 2 Chronicles 7, 12 to 15. And I'm reading the King James Version, y'all. I didn't go with Amplified. It was just too much for tonight. And the scripture says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night. Prior to verse 12, it talked about him building and completing the temple and they're celebrating because they're in obedience and they're you know, doing what God instructed and all that they're celebrating. Well, in verse 12, the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. Then he says, if I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence, among my people. So if these things happen, he's saying, if my people, Christ ones, Christians, disciples, disciples, believers, those who follow the name of the Lord, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, his throne, I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Verse 15, now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. And it was talking about, you know, the tabernacle where they built, you know, the, uh, the, the tabernacle to the Lord. So he's, Telling Solomon first, I've heard your prayer because they were praying and offering burnt offerings and praising God and all that. God heard them. And then he says, if I shut up heaven, famine, no rain, drought, if I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence, pestilence, plagues, you know, all kinds of different things that will, uh, you know, cause anxiety and epidemic and, you know, challenges and even death. If I do that, if my people, so he has given us a clear directive of how we can see healing, of how we can see turnaround and see breakthrough, right? Are you his people? Do you name the name of Lord? So you have a responsibility. Humble yourselves, put away pride, put away arrogance, put away rebellion, put away disobedience, all, all you know, part of humbling yourselves. Pray, come to the Lord, 
you know, set aside time, uh, dedicated time. However, all throughout the day praying, you see something, you see something going on, you get that news pop up, you see the news, you know, you plead the blood, you apply the blood of Jesus, you decree, decree and declare the word of the Lord, you pray for those that are sick, you pray for those that are attending to those who are sick. Seek his face. Lord, what is the answer? I come to you. You know, show me me. Repent from whatever it is and turn from their wicked ways. He's like, my people, Christians, wicked? Yeah, mm -hmm, absolutely. Yeah, right? If we allow the flesh to dictate, if we allow the flesh to rule, we have the answer for coronavirus and for everything else based on this scripture. So seek the Lord. What is the answer? What is my part in this, he said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Our land is in need of healing. I didn't even hear it ahead of time, but supposedly the president declared Sunday to be a day of prayer. Every day should be a day of prayer, right? It shouldn't just be a May when it's a national day of prayer. We should be praying constantly. So for us, First of all, as I said, if right now you're feeling overwhelmed, hey, Teeter, welcome. Right now, if you're feeling overwhelmed, right now, if you have been impacted directly or indirectly by the coronavirus, and all of us have in some way, some more than others, um, others, unfortunately, pray. No, first, humble yourselves, pray, seek the Lord's face and turn. And he gave us a promise. And then he says, my eyes shall be open. I will see you. My ears will be attent unto your prayer that is made in this place. And that place for us is wherever we are, our home, our workplace, our cars, wherever we are, we can dedicate, uh, we can pray, we can praise, we can repent. Wherever we are, we can make an altar uh, to sacrifice to the Lord. No, we're not killing animals or any of that, but we can sacrifice our time you may be led to or called to turn down your plate in terms of praying fasting consecrating whatever it is allow the lord to lead another scripture in terms of encouraging us whose report will we believe philippians 4 6 7 if you've been with me any length of time I have decreed and declared this multiple times because it's a command. And if the Lord said it, that means we can do it. I'm using verse six from the Amplified and verse seven from the King James. Do not fret or have anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer and petition, definite requests, we have a definite request, Lord God, end this plague. End this coronavirus in the name of Jesus. You don't have to be deep, thou, these, thines, and all that. Definite request with thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for ending this plague. Thank you, Lord God, for revival in the land. Thank you for salvation, repentance, because that's what he's saying. If my people who are called by my name, in terms of repentance, those who are outside Christ, Lord isn't hearing them. He's hearing us. So that's why it's on us to stand and intercede for those who are outside the ark of safety. We have the responsibility. Yes, we do. With thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. What is our wants? It's clear. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus so that we are not frantic, so that we are not fearful, but that we remain in faith. That's where we need to be at this time. The last scripture as I close, Luke 21, 8 to 11 in the Amplified. And he said, be on your guard and be careful that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name, appropriating to themselves the name Messiah, which belongs to me. This is the Lord speaking saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go out after them. And when you hear of wars and insurrections, disturbances, disorder, and confusion, don't, do not become alarmed and panic-stricken and terrified, for all this must take place first, but the end will not come immediately. Then he told them, nation, 
will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be mighty and violent earthquakes. We've had that. And in various places, famine. We've had that. And pestilence, comma, plagues, malignant and contagious or infectious epidemic diseases, which are deadly and devastating. And there will be sights of terror and great signs from heaven. So last from last week, you know, being on, you know, YouTube, watching different things, different people said, oh, I prophesied this a year ago. I prophesied this, you know, five years ago, whatever. Why? Because they want attention now. The Lord declared it in the Bible multiple years ago, right? So all these people, you know, yes, they may have been preaching and the Lord spoke. Yes, there will be a plague. But the Lord clearly said, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to take place. So those people who are saying this, what it says, be careful, be on guard that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name. So for us who name the name of Christ, we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility because we have the answer. We have the good news, which is the Lord. We have hope in the Lord. Our assurance, our confidence is in the Lord God, our Savior. We are to stand interceding, praying for these challenges, praying for these troubling times, and believing. So I said, pray believing. Whose report will you believe right now as of this? Well, this morning, the CDC recommended not gatherings of 50. Last week, well, this past weekend, many churches were impacted because it said 250 and above, you know, no, no gathering. And my question is, is it a demand? <laughs> is it a requirement? Is it a recommendation? Because my confidence is in the Lord, right? As I said, yes, I'm wise because I'm not going to hug everybody. It's like, okay, you know, peace. Sunday, our meet and greet was, hey, wave to everybody, right? So we're going to be wise. However, we're going to walk in faith and we're going to trust God and we're going to decree, decree and declare what thus says the Lord. So do not be deceived. So many people have walked away. So many believers have walked away from the faith and following those who claim the name of Jesus or those who are coming in um providing worship experiences all over. But if the name of Jesus is not lifted up, if the uh, gospel is not preached and declared, it's in vain. So we are in these times. And because the word says it's going to be, you know, terror and devastation, this is the first of what we're going to see. So no matter what, believe God. No matter what, trust God. And if you're on here and you're a Christian, meaning a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, know that you are hid in him. Psalms 91, if we hide under the shadow of the Almighty, no plague shall come near our dwelling. I've been standing on that word, that scripture, among many for years calling out the names of family members for years. And just this week, it's like, okay, I need to add people who are not blood related, but their family to that list, covering uh, each and every individual with the blood of the lamb, right? So Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. God, I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for you are faithful. I magnify you and honor you, Lord God, for you are not alarmed. You are not fearful. You are not anxious about anything. So our confidence, our trust can be in you, should be in you. I thank you, Lord God, for covering our hearts and minds and keeping us in peace. I lift up everyone who has been diagnosed with this virus or any other virus or disease in the name of Jesus. And I plead and apply the blood of Jesus over their bodies from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, praying that their immune systems will be built up, that they will be strengthened, that there shall be no death come near them 
that they will receive the treatment that they need. I pray, Father God, for a covering, for a hedge around all those that are in the medical field that are treating them, all those at the CDC that are researching for a vaccine. I pray for a covering. I pray, Lord God, that you will be glorified. I pray for revival in the land as we return to you, as we seek you, as we are obedient to your principles. Lord God, we will see your hand. So demonstrate your power. You'll be glorified in the midst of your people. We thank you for wisdom, for the pastors, for the preachers in, in, in being able to encourage their congregation and their flock and to still declare the word of the Lord. God, you are faithful and I stand still to see your salvation. I pray for those who have been impacted financially uh, by the closing of businesses and by the shutting down of different uh, operations, Father God, those who uh, are impacted for childcare who still needs to go to work, but their schools are closed. Look at Father, I pray for peace. I pray for answers. I pray for direction. I pray for clarity. I lift up the presidents of the United States and I pray, Father God, that he will be submitted to you, that he will be submitted to wise counsel in how to carry out, how to function. I pray for every country, every uh, nation, Canada closing borders, Europe. Lord God, demonstrate your power. You be glorified. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray and with thanksgiving. So be in courage. No, my head is not stuck in the sand. I am not oblivious to what is going on. However, my God is greater than any and every situation. Yes, look up for our redemption draw at nine. I like to say, oh, we rapture ready. The Lord can crack the sky any moment. However, we haven't seen everything and the gospel hasn't gone to the ends of the earth yet. So the gospel has to be preached. But those of us who name the name of Christ we have the responsibility. Ask the Lord, show me who to talk to. Show me who to encourage, what to say. And thank him. Trust him. God is faithful. We have the opportunity. Take the opportunity to be an encouragement, to be a light, a source in our family, outside our family, wherever we go. If we're inside, if you're on social media, post that encouraging word, right? Because there's so many things that's coming at us. And when I say not to drill it in the ground, yes, Jude, I was reading... Um, I was reading that uh, earlier today. So we're getting bombarded with the media. So come against that. By Jesus Christ, we heal. Trust in the Lord so that we can give encouragement to those who are legitimately anxious, those who are scared, those who don't have the hope that we have, that God is faithful and he's the answer, right? So be encouraged, be encouraged, be encouraged today. Believe the report of the Lord. This may be a fact, but the truth is, by Jesus' stripes we heal. By his blood we have been made whole, right? So stand on the truth of God's word. Be encouraged. Thank you for tuning in. We're here each Monday, 6 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time. Just giving you some encouragement. Um, and in right now, these times, we need encouragement. God is faithful. Praying for you, lifting you up. Love you all. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for investing this uh, brief t period of time to join me. God bless you. Love you. Until the next time, be encouraged. Stay in faith. God is faithful. TishaRose.com. Send an email if you need a prayer, if you have a concern, if you're thinking you want to faint. That is not an option. Giving up, giving out, giving in is not an option. God bless you. Love you. Bye. You're welcome. Thank you all.